This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Okay, one disclosure, which is that I am a medical editor for Decision Aid on PAD for the Foundation for Informed Medical Decision Making. So, improving functional performance in people with peripheral artery disease is a major challenge, and we have very few medical therapies that are effective. Um, what I'm going to do today is talk to you about what the data show regarding home based exercise and um, how you might be able to begin to implement this with your patients. And just to begin, in case you're not convinced yet, patients with peripheral artery disease, even if they don't have classic claudication symptoms, have significantly impaired functional performance. Um, this slide shows on the x-axis an ABI. The y-axis is the percent of people with PAD who stop during the six-minute walk. The lower the ABI, the greater the likelihood that a patient cannot walk for six minutes without stopping. And in addition to functional impairment, lower ABI values are associated with significantly greater decline in six-minute walk, shown here in our walks cohort for people with more severe PAD, mild to moderate PAD, and no PAD. So significant problem with functional impairment and decline. As you know, we have just two FDA-approved medications for treating claudication. Of these, pentoxifiline is probably not better than placebo. Solostazole provides only modest benefit. We really have very little to offer patients medically for um, improving their walking performance. Supervised treadmill exercise works, but very few patients participate. I recently did a um, survey or a um, database inquiry at Northwestern and found that out of over 1,000 PAD patients in our large primary care practice, less than 1% was participating in a supervised treadmill exercise program at Northwestern. So it's, so, it's very underused. But um, this, the, what's been, what has worked with regard to supervised treadmill exercise may inform how we might help our patients to adhere to a home-based exercise program. So I'm going to talk briefly about supervised exercise and what works. Um, this is a 2012 meta-analysis of 25 randomized trials of supervised exercise versus control in over 1,000 patients with claudication. And you won't be surprised um, to see that point estimate shown down here. Um, maximal treadmill walking distance in this meta-analysis increased by 180 meters and pain-free walking distance by 128 meters, significantly greater improvement in treadmill walking performance for those in the randomized trials and supervised exercise compared to control. Um, again, what has been shown to work in supervised exercise might inform what would work at home. So in a, a meta-analysis that was performed back in 1995, which is often cited, um, but actually only had a couple randomized trials, mainly had uncontrolled trials. But nonetheless, um, they looked at their data to see what characteristics of a supervised exercise program were more successful. And what they found was that an exercise frequency of at least three times per week, an exercise duration of at least 30 minutes per session, walking to maximal claudication pain on the treadmill, and a program duration of at least six months were the most successful features of the program. So the programs with these characteristics tended to be more successful. Now, in the 2012 
meta-analysis that I mentioned where we now have 25 randomized trials as opposed to a couple and over 1,000 PAD patients, some of those assumptions are challenged, specifically this issue of needing to walk to maximal pain. And in this meta-analysis, whether or not the trial had the patient walk to the onset of pain or maximal pain or no pain, all of the supervised exercise programs were successful. And one could imagine that if we ask our patients to walk with minimal pain, that perhaps that would be more acceptable to them and they may be more likely to adhere. Also, um, whereas the Gardner analysis suggested that you needed a six-month program, actually with more data, more randomized trials, 12 to 26 months seems to be I'm sorry, 12 to 26 weeks seems to be optimal. Um, so even shorter programs, even at 12 weeks, one can realize a significant benefit from a supervised program. So some of the original assumptions were questioned. So to summarize supervised treadmill exercise, it works and it works very well, it works better than the medications that we have available, but Medicare doesn't pay. Most medical insurance companies don't pay, and largely because of that, most PAD patients don't participate. So the question becomes, what about walking at home? Is unsupervised walking exercise effective? Current clinical practice guidelines say that there is insufficient evidence to advise patients with PAD to go home and walk. Um, and here is some evidence to, to favor that um, conclusion. It's from a meta-analysis by the Cochrane Collaboration back in 2006. Um, they compared home-based exercise, shown on this side, versus supervised exercise with the outcome of treadmill walking performance. And you can see this is just a standardized mean, standardized mean difference, so it doesn't have a lot of um, uh, metric with regard to um, walking on the treadmill, but the point is that the supervised programs were significantly better than the unsupervised programs in improving walking performance. So that's a bit discouraging when it comes to a home-based program. Um, also discouraging, these are some data from uh, one of our supervised trials. We found that supervised treadmill exercise works, but once you end the program, all the gains go away. And that's also discouraging. But just to show you, here were the people in our treadmill exercise supervised program at six month follow up, substantial gains in treadmill, or this is six minute walk performance. Six months later, even though we called them on a regular basis and encouraged them to keep walking, but we didn't provide it for them, all the gains are lost. And here's the attention control condition. Um, they actually declined at six months and stayed about the same 12 months later. Looking at the data another way, baseline to six months, there's huge gains in the treadmill loss in the control group. Six to 12 months, all of those gains are now lost in the supervised group. So uh, discouraging, just a telephone call and follow up was not sufficient to help them maintain their gains. There's, however, three new randomized trials have been published in the last two years um, two of which suggest, actually three have been done, one is ours and it's not yet published, but I'm going to show you the data. Um, three trials suggesting, two of them suggesting that a home-based program can work. This is a trial by Andy Gardner that was published about two years ago. He randomized 119 patients with claudication to one of three groups, uh, supervised treadmill exercise, standard program, home-based um, program, and let me tell you how he did this. He gave patients ankle activity monitors and told them to go home and walk three days a week for 40 minutes, and that ankle monitor transmitted back to his office or his exercise physiologist what they were doing. The patients would come in once uh, every two weeks and get feedback. So an exercise physiologist would say, you know, you need to do more or you're doing great, um, and then his program was for 12 weeks. And he found that this, home, this type of home-based program worked. So here, um, looking at 12-week follow-up, uh, there was no change in the usual care group, significant improvement in a standard supervised exercise program, and significant improvement in a home-based program. Um, there really wasn't power to make this kind of comparison between the two exercise groups, but compared to the control group, the home-based program worked. That was um, maximal treadmill walking time. This is pain-free walking time. Again, the same phenomenon. Improvement in the green, which is the home-based 
program um, and also in the supervised program. So this is quite encouraging. Um, again, it was a 12-week program. It did use um, activity monitors. I know talking to Andy Gardner, he really feels strongly that those activity monitors were important because they could convey the data directly back to the investigative team and the patient would get individual feedback. Now, one um, thing to note about this is there was a 25% dropout rate. And it's unclear whether you know, those are the people that weren't getting benefit and they didn't come back. And um, perhaps that could have affected the outcome if those people had, been, had their um, follow-up measured at 12 weeks. Another trial that was published also in 2011 by Tracy Collins Group in, at University of Minnesota looked at 145 participants, even larger trial, who had claudication and diabetes. This was a six-month intervention, home-based. Um, and the way her intervention worked is that there were weekly group walking sessions with other PAD participants. It's not clear when the participants came in at the week, um, every week whether they were getting any feedback from like a coach, but they did get telephone calls every two weeks from a coach who gave them feedback. And they were also given pedometers, although it's not clear from her paper how much the pedometers were used to give feedback. Um, and there was no difference. Her trial was negative. So at six-month follow-up, um, the control group and the intervention group were not different with regard to their improvement in, in uh, either um, maximal walking time or pain-free walking time on the treadmill. So one negative and one positive study. Um, why the difference? I'm not sure. The Collins um, group had only diabetic patients. Could that make a difference? The six-month follow-up, not sure that would make a difference, but very different outcomes. Um, so next, our trial, the GOALS trial, which was a randomized controlled trial of a group-mediated cognitive behavioral intervention versus control um, in a home-based walking program. What, what is GMCB? Well, the participants would come in with other PAD participants once a week, so they met in a group. And the idea was that the group would give the others support. Um, they would talk about their experiences walking. There was a coach there at the sessions. And each week, there'd be a different topic that was discussed. For example, in Chicago, walking in cold weather, or what if you get ill? How do you get back on track? Um, goal setting, that kind of thing. Um, so we did self-monitoring. We gave the patients um, logs, and they were asked to set goals each week. They brought their logs back. We looked at them each week, gave them feedback. We asked them to walk five days a week. We wanted the walking to be part of their life, something they just got used to doing as part of their daily routine. And we asked them to work up to 40 to 50 minutes. So our trial is positive. Um, we found a significant benefit from the intervention, the home-based program. This is our primary outcome was six-minute walk. At six-month follow-up, we found a significant improvement in the six-minute walk in the intervention and a small decline <clears throat> in the um, control group. Interestingly, this is our treadmill data. Um, greater improvement, again, in, in maximum and pain-free walking time in the intervention group. This, um, it, what was interesting is that the six-minute walk improvement was actually, the magnitude was greater in this trial than it was in our supervised trial, while the treadmill gains were less than in our supervised trial that we previously completed. And I think that maybe we encourage these patients at home to walk over ground, to find a mall or a track. Um, some of them, even though we didn't encourage us, walked in their home. We had one woman walking in her basement, which I don't know how far she could get, but um, at any rate, they were encouraged to walk over ground, and the six-minute walk seemed to be more responsive to that. We also saw improvements in their perception of how they were doing using the WIQ scale for the distance, walking speed, and stair climbing, greater improvement in the intervention in all three outcomes compared to control, um, and this is physical activity. So in all of these measures, we found significant improvement. So what do you tell patients based on these? All of these studies required still that the participant come back either once a week in two of the trials or every other week in the Gardner trial. And insurance doesn't pay for that. So that may still be a barrier to these types of even the successful home-based programs that I've shown you. Um, 
But all of the programs have had a coach that provides feedback. Um, and also the successful programs law, had the patients log what they were doing and keep track of it, self-monitor, and get the patients got feedback on that. Um, but there's still areas for future study. How, I think it would be ideal if we had an intervention where patients didn't need to come at all. Um, maybe they, all of their walking could be monitored remotely, perhaps. Um, and uh, ultimately, can the coach be removed and still continue the progress? Nobody's been able, nobody's demonstrated that yet. Um, and then these patients are sick, as we all know, and how do you get them back on their feet after they've been hospitalized for a pneumonia or another medical issue? And then I think an important question to address is whether walking pain-free, the supervise, you know, we've, we've heard for many years the importance of having the claudication patient walk to maximal pain, because the Gardner meta-analysis back in 1995 suggested that was important, but more recent data suggests it may not be. And perhaps if patients could walk at their own pace more comfortably, they would be more willing to adhere to a home-based program. So in summary, supervised treadmill exercise, if it's available to a patient, obviously they should take advantage of it, but most people can't afford it, it's too inconvenient. Um, and now we do have data that home-based programs can be successful. And um, if a coach isn't available, I think as um, care providers, we should encourage our patients to walk um, at home um, at least three days a week, three to five days a week, try to make it part of their regular routine, set goals, write down what they're doing, and then when they come back for follow-up, um, review their, their um, logs and, and give them feedback. Perhaps this could become somewhat similar to glucose monitoring, except we won't have a blood test to track what they're actually doing. But if they can kind of keep track and know what they should be doing, and that could be relayed back to their doctor for feedback, that might be a, a way to help them um, adhere to home-based walking and improve their functional performance. Thank you.